What's up, Tashuki Nation? It's Fitzbro, and today we're going to be going through my deck that I use for the reworked version of Lakota that was just released last week for Age of Empires 3 Definitive Edition, and be giving a little bit of insight into my deck, what I like to use, and then a little bit about the strategy I've been kind of deploying on the ladder so far. So let's get into it. The very first thing we have here, this is my more standard deck. Now, this is not actually the deck that I've been using in my games. I've been using the deck crafted for Harrison, you can see here, but we'll get into that in just a second. Let's highlight this more standard deck and some of the features. So first card you're gonna wanna send, three villagers. That's always gonna be your first card you wanna send. In fact, in the first age now, a big difference, you have 200 wood starting, 200 wood and the 100 gold as usual. So you want to, after you get that first villager in queue, micro your villagers onto those wood crates. Don't gather the gold crate. And you wanna get that 200 wood and drop a trade post immediately. The faster you get that XP, that's the faster you're gonna be able to ship this three villager shipment. She goes villager seconds and resources and aging up in a faster time. Your goal here is going to be to fast age and ship four axe riders as soon as possible to go harass your opponent. And if they age slowly enough, you may even be able to pick off whatever buildings they've aged up with to the, uh, to the second age as of a tower. Um, and another thing, when you're in transition to the second age, you want to make sure you are chopping for wood and dropping a second trade post when it po at all possible. And then in the first age, what I do is try to pick up one other wood treasure and then maybe chop like five or 10 wood so I could drop that single TP because you want a trade post and a TP in the first age. Okay, so more about the cards. We got three villagers. You're gonna send four ax riders right when you get to the second age. Follow that up with the 700 wood. With that 700 wood, you can use it to get your st stage coach, which is gonna be 200 wood. You can drop, I've been doing two stables, so that's gonna be 400 wood. Right, so we've got our 400, our 600 wood, that leaves us an additional 100 wood left. And you can use that to drop your market and you can even either uh, chop 50 wood to get that hunting dogs or find a treasure, which is what I usually end up doing. Now, maybe there's a case where you don't wanna open double stable and you wanna try some Warhawk gameplay, that's on you. I've been doing double stable and it's been doing really, really well. I mean, pumping out 10 bow riders at a time is really strong. You switch over to axe riders. And if your opponent just tries to age up, just sit on other towns in there and draw that idle time. And another new shipment, well, it's not a new shipment, but a tweak shipment is the seven Seton Bowmen. This is more than it used to be. I think it used to be six. So this is going to be a stronger shipment than it was before. And they lock on now. So it's a great shipment, particularly if you play Lakota Mirror. You know, typically you might have a lot of bow riders back and forth. This could be a great shipment to have in your deck. Uh, now, I'm gonna show you some other things in this deck. There's a few things, the reason why I'm not using this deck right now. Uh, we've got our typical, nothing really out of the ordinary here in H3. Um, I do have pneumatic expansion so that my infantry can build TPs out on the field. Lakota support, uh, this is actually gonna be cheaper if you get the big button at the Tribal Marketplace. This only is gonna cost 850. So you get 16 Wakina, two Warhut. It's a pretty good shipment if you've got a lot of gold and are able to swing it and have some space if you've been harassing. In the fourth age, uh, Kachita, 20% HP for our units. This is a super powerful card. And this is why I say this is my more standard deck. I think you're going to use this maybe in more regular scenarios, maybe when people learn how to stop the rush, or, or perhaps maybe they even nerf the, the opening a little bit. But this card is going to be really good, particularly for your team play, team game players. And then seven council fires. This is going to be to upgrade your Wakina to be H4 units, as uh, well as your seat and club. But... Honestly, I don't want clubs and scenes. Even with like some of the upgrades they have, like I still don't want to use them. And then, of course, you also have your captured mortars, 500 gold. So some cool things there. But let me show you the deck that I have been using primarily. Crafted for Harrison when I was trying to figure out how to rush him to death. And I also used this in a Lakota mirror recently, and this deck worked perfectly for that. But the key things you're going to see in this deck... It's going to be Furrier there in the first age for that uh, hunting, gathering rate, and 8% yield. And then, of course, we've got our Great Hunter. Now, what I've been typically doing is sending Furrier before Great Hunter in some scenarios just because I like to get that, like, boost of food you can get from this. But, I don't know, I've been experimenting. I've been wondering, like, you know, the, the amount of food you save and gather time. Like, I, I would have to really crunch the numbers and maybe someone could let me know in the comments, like, if it actually is worth waiting to send this versus just send it right away and get that food. Um, but, yeah, I've been typically doing Furrier and then Great Hunter when I do it. But, typically with this deck, I'm sending three veils. Doing everything I described to you before, getting a trade post in the first age, chopping, getting that first TP in my base. 
in transition to the second age with the fast age. Uh, I've been doing my uh, getting a second trade post and then I ship that four actors right away. I go harass second shipment, just like I described before, 700 wood. Then I follow that up with 700 gold. So you can just put all your villagers basically. Once you have that, uh, that second trade post down, uh, you can just ship that 700 wood, which is going to allow you to get the stagecoach. It's going to allow you to get the market, get two stables. And then by the time it takes you to build those stables, I mean, you're probably going to have the second trade post or second shipment on the way, especially if you've been picking off any villagers or you can go around and gather some other treasures with your axe riders, whatever you want to do. Um, but ship the 700 gold, get all your villagers on food, and then you can train 10 bow riders. Okay, so you're going to use that to really synergize on your attack. And then behind that, I've been sending a combinations of furrier or great hunter. Now, depending if like if they've got a lot of resistance, like if I see like a t like a you know a pop of skirmishers that somehow I can't kill or whatever, I might send send uh, the Tokola soldiers or even three axe riders. But a lot of times, bow riders though will take care of just about anything. But if your opponent has turtled up really well and has some light infantry, you might have some struggles with your with your bow riders. So uh, you know be flexible with it. But in general, that's what I'm doing. And then looking in here. Uh, I've also having this, the friendly territory it gives the TPs more hit points and attack speed. I don't usually send this to way later. Like it's a cool card, but all these other things are gonna be way more powerful. Um, you can even consider putting 700 food in here in place of something, maybe even like one of these cards, if you really wanted to just to have the res to pump out batches of, uh, cavalry. Um, another thing I have in here is the advanced trade post. I've actually experimented with instead of going straight to four axe riders in transition send this and if it's if it's a, if it's a map where i can get more than two trade posts because some maps you can't really so if it's a map where i can get three trade posts this could be pretty good you're going to save some wood on this um and be able to grab two of the training posts and then they're going to be a little more defensible they're going to have more hp they have a little bit of attack so i've experimented with doing three bill advanced training posts and then four axe riders but that's going to be on, 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 depending on the map and the matchup and your opponent, you know, and how aggressive they might be. Uh, so that's kind of a cool thing there. Now in the third age, you've got eight villagers. This is one of the best Lakota shipments I guess there is now. I mean, economic wise, uh, economy wise, eight villagers is really, really good. So when you get to third age, I am almost always, unless I'm a really under the military pressure, sending eight villagers just because that's going to be so good. And if you've done the big button at the tribal marketplace, they're going to gather. They're not as much XP as they used to, but every villager you have gathering is going to get you a little bit of XP. And it's going to help you get to that next shipment. And I would highly even consider in the third age, if you can swing it with your economy, if you've done an extended second age, you know, you've sent for and you've sent great hunter, ideally, uh, and you're in a situation where you're, you're really gathering resources fast. If you can swing it to buy the upgrade at your marketplace, which costs 500 each resource, that gives you a bunch of XP. You can really spam out even more shipments, assuming you already even control the trade line. So you're going to really synergize with that. Now, this deck might be a little bit trolly. Honestly, I've thought about maybe, you know, and maybe I'll make this dead right now as we're talking about it. I think I'm going to take out the the wood crafting because I generally have not really been going war hut. I originally thought like, oh, yeah, I'm going to go really heavy on war hut in the second age. I find like that uh, the stables have been doing so well. I think maybe you add in a few of those age four cars just in the case that, you know, you do end up getting there. It'll be nice to have some options. So let's do that. I'm going to have the mortars. I'm going to have that. Uh, I could even take out uh, maybe the three axe riders and put in uh, 18 Wakina could be a good shipment. Uh, but, you know, you can play around with this. Adjust as you need to. I don't think the teepees are as amazing as they seem. You can't stack them anymore, and you still got to get them, like, all over the map. They cost wood. Now, if you got trade post generating wood, make sure that can do it for you. But, like, this allows them to construct them and gives military building training speeds. Like, the training speeds usually aren't really my issue. That's usually, like, resource-based, right? So, I mean, it's cool. You can let them construct again, but, like, I don't even know if this is really worth sending. Maybe it's better putting another H4 card. I mean, you could debate if you want to try the seven council fire uh, for that upgrade for your wakina but in general i usually at this point have enough resources that i'd rather have the 18 wakina and just pay for the upgrade uh sometimes but you know, it's kind of going to depend on you but there you go that is my lakota deck guide this is as of it is june 27th today so this is the first iteration of the lakota rework 
I would not be surprised if maybe we saw a decrease in that starting wood or something to slow down that Axe Rider attack in the second age because they've nerfed this in the past when they nerfed fast age. They really don't like you being in people's base so quickly causing problems and you no know, players that are used to having plenty of room to set up plenty of banks and torps and uh, <laughs> contra houses, all that stuff. They're, they might not be as happy about this, but we'll see what they decide to do. So let me know what you think about these decks I've got set up here. Let me know what you're using, what you think of the low code of rework, and anything like that. And I'll be streaming some of this over on twitch.tv slash Fitzbro. And you can join the Discord link down below and grab that AOE3 roll. I've got an AOE3 general chat where we can talk more about the decks I'm trying. And I will have all of these decks uh, copied and pasted into my Discord. And as I update them, I'll be putting an updated version. So this is likely going to change over time. Okay, thank you so much guys for watching. And as always, hit that sub button and I'll see you in the next one.